we've been investing um, quite a bit in conducting research on important trends. And of course, among the most important are, uh, are our employees um, and employee communications. This isn't just about employee communications, um, but this is really about how employees uh, can both build and defend uh, a company's reputation. There is a new grassroots movement out there. It's an evolution of engagement. But definitely, the, all the dots are lining up. They're telling the story. And we're here today to talk about employee activists and what we can tell you from the research. And I hope it's provocative, and it makes you really think about what's ahead. So how do we define employee activists? So these are employees who make their engagement visible. They defend their companies from criticism. And, and they're advocates. They're online and offline. This is at the heart of the study, and this is why the study is so exciting, because we had this notion, and then we found out it's true. 21%, 2 out of 10 employees are employee activists. And when you think about it, you have a company, let's say you have 5,000 people in a company. 1,000 of them are defending their employers. They're watching their employers back. And, and the other point is they're also sharing good news and information. They're sharing cheer, fun things, and a lot of those different uh, good things that could be said about companies. First, embrace the new reality. It's everything's changed. And the dots, the dots have really lined up. Um, we're totally convinced of it. The research shows that. Two, identify your workforce segments. Figure out where in your, are your activists, how do you activate them, your pre-activists. Activate from the top. Leadership in the research, we found that the leadership is the top driver of activism, followed by you know, great internal communications, um, followed by really solid HR policies and corporate social responsibility. But activate from the top, and hey, this is a place for social CEOs. I'm, get those CEOs out there, make them somewhat social, and th that should really help as well. Find the right triggers, and we can help you with that because it's in the research, encourage it. Um, give employees stories, good stories to share, to tell, and spread, spread them. So I want to leave you with this thought. So we just learned 56% of employees are already defending their companies. So they're already first responders. Two, we learned that 50%, one out of two, are online. They're already you know, posting things and pictures and videos about their employers. And only 42% dismal have any idea what their company does, can explain it to someone. So here we have this well, dangerous situation about employees today. So our advice is that uh, organizations, all companies, everyone really needs to move a little qu more quickly um, in this era of engagement. It's really time to tell those stories, find those stories, give employees a way to share it, and leave you with this thought. It's time to really grow your activists. Again, I want to say it's not to say that there aren't risks with social media, because we certainly know there are plenty. But time really to connect the dots, think of all the immense opportunities. When big changes happen, how do you make that communication to employees and tell them what's OK to say, what's not to say, and what's really going on with the company in a way that seems authentic? As we've grown from about 1,000 employees when I started to I think we're around 5,000 now, um, I think we've started to take more formal steps and be uh, more thoughtful about how we really make sure that our employees are not only sharing things, but are doing it in a thoughtful way that's constructive for their personal brand and their uh, personal networking as well as for the company. And so um, I definitely agree, you know, when Leslie talked about it, it comes from the leadership. It is at every level of our company, you see this uh, from Jeff Weiner, our CEO, down to every individual contributor, really wanting to represent LinkedIn and, and be an activist for, for the company. I think people are generally very excited to share news, share information, and talk about what they're working on. And I think we um, encourage it and uh, also are, you know, when there's something we don't want people to share, their leadership is very clear about that and, and lets you know that it's something uh, internal that you should wait to share. Today, uh, on social, 
customers, either B2B, B2C, are really interested in connecting with empowered employees or subject matter experts, not brand spokespeople or marketeers, right? So we saw that early on. And so we really established a program that allowed us to, uh, first of all, have a policy that is um, easy to understand and uh, boiled down to five core principles that our employees can relate to and then activate and certify them so they can be brand champions because there is no greater influencer or uh, champion for your brand than your employees. A lot of the stuff that really makes Zappos what it is, is our employees posting stuff that has nothing to do with the job itself um, in terms of what their day-to-day -day work is, but it's the posting that they post of them wearing funny costumes walking down the hallway or um, I think that kind of gives a bird's eye view of to what Zappos is and it's not just a company but it's a company about its employees taking care of its employees who then take care of our customers. You know you look at uh, your workplace as a it's a big piece of your life in many cases it's more than 50 percent of your life uh, and for companies to lock down and not allow uh, employees to talk about that piece of their life and social media is uh, really a detriment to the company and to the employee. And uh, if you had asked any company, any CEO or any uh, small business owner, even 10 years ago, who their biggest advocate was, they would have said their employee. And that's changed with the sort of advent of social and digital media. And so it's really up to uh, companies to you know, take a strong look at this, figure out why they might be hindering empowering employees to become really spokespeople uh, or share content or really be amplifiers of that message. I've been doing change work for a long time and although there's, there's always been a lot of change in organizations, I think that's one way that things have really changed. That the information flow is faster, people have access to tools that enable them to share that information really quickly. Um, conversely, our study showed that good communication can really help drive engagement in organizations going through a great deal of change. So, you know, one of the things, I thought this was a really interesting fact, effective change communications can drive engagement levels three times higher than companies that aren't communicating effectively in times of change. And even more interesting is that nearly four times uh, as many employees are likely to post positive things about their employer if communications are done well during major change uh, projects. Activate your proactivists. So these are the people who are the influencers in your organization who can really get out there and informally drive change in the organization. They're ready to do it, they just need the information and a little bit of training to, to get them going. I think making sure that you're using multiple forms of communication and then talking to your employees about what is okay to share, what is not okay to share, and making it as easy as possible for them. I, I recommend uh, to companies that I work with, you know, give them articles that you want them to share. Give them a blurb, here's what we're going to say, here's sort of how we want you to frame it. And I think it's really important to give them the rationa rationale behind the change, behind the decisions, so that they really feel like they understand it and it makes them feel confident in putting a message out there that's being given to them because they understand the reasoning behind it. I think whether it's good, bad, whatever you want them to share, make it easy and people are gonna be willing to do it. So I think that's really the key is giving people those easy snackable bites that they can share with their networks on social media. Tony usually in the past would send out you know, tweetable messages or he would attach tweet, uh, something that you could tweet or Facebook um, to the bottom of his email that he would send out to the company explaining this is what's going on or this is the reason why we're doing it. Um, but a lot of it I think comes down to informing, making sure you're informing the employees about all the different aspects uh, of the change um, and then allowing them to kind of run free with it. So on this one, particularly um, with Holacracy, he didn't actually put a tweetable message at the bottom or Facebook or anything that um, someone could just click and just repost because he wanted people to kind of um, put out there what it is that they felt about it. Um, and then that's how he kind of gauged um, and we kind of gauged um, what the climate was and then how we needed to make changes to make sure that we were doing best by the employees. Even though we thought this was a great idea to roll out Holacracy and we th still think it is, we want to make sure that it's, um, it's meeting with the employees. It, it's meeting the employees halfway. You need to be in a position where you're helping manage and control that messaging and that brand that they're sharing. And so it's not something that I think people should be afraid of. It should be seen as an asset that you have these employees that want to work on your behalf, that want to be an activist for your company. Um, but I think it's fear of the unknown. I think it's fear of you know, that they're going to be one of the people that share something negative. Um, but I think, you know, I liked um, Stephen's point about not managing around an exception. Those people are going to be the exception. For the most part, people are going to share good things that are going to help your company. Um, and I think you need to embrace that. There's a fear of it, but I think that also comes from organizations not understanding the value of social for the brand as well. 
um, and then not really going through that cultural shift that has to happen to really embrace social. Like you said, it does come from the top and it comes from the bottom. So there's really kind of sandwiching that has to happen for that cultural shift to really uh, come to fruition. But for us, you know, we absolutely saw that, you know, you really need to, in, to empower the employee, you need to um, really train them effectively so that they understand the rules of the road, how to be effective and social, be a strong voice of the brand. But as Stephen indicated, have a persona because we don't want to unleash a bunch of spamming robots. It's especially difficult for companies who are highly regulated or in industries where the idea of sharing information externally or you know, they're worried about legal issues. I'm sure there are many people in here who have that issue. And I think the thing about that is, again, people are already out there. So if you can get the people who are going to say positive things active, you're really you know, not increasing your risk, but you're getting people out there who you know, will say good things. And we, do, we see plenty of cases where um, that is happening, where companies who you know, either have a controversial business or in a regulated industry are out there talking and getting their employees to um, post on social media. Part of the C-suite's role is really to really understand the value of social and take the time to understand what uh, what really comes out of that. And I think it's more than just being another play. It's not a trick, right? It's not a way to you know post something interesting and, and turn it into some you know um, media circus with Kanye or something like that. Obviously, we have some people here that their leaders are much more uh, thought leadership around social. Um, but a lot of this has to do with the uh, you know regulations and questions that are still out there. Uh, we have run into questions about, you know, part-time employees and can they share, you know, if they're off hours, they have to get paid when they're sharing, things like that. Um, so I think it's not only that the uh, C-suite has to sort of lead by example, that's an obvious thing, but also uh, sort of empower the employees and recognize them. And social allows you now to connect with, you know, have those conversations with employees or recognize employees in an in open forum. This is really important. I mean, if you're thinking about the future and how you want to show that you're uh, technologically advanced and you're, you're seeing all those dots lining up, CEOs need to embrace it. And it doesn't mean that you have to be out there tweeting. It could also mean that you're on your own intranet, your, whatever your internal platform is, and being open and um, uh, sending, sharing information socially internally. That's a great, great start. I like to think the ROI is probably twofold. It's one, it's our way of marketing. It's a way of being able to show the public as well as other you know, people what goes on at Zappos, what Zappos brand is all about, the culture. But I think we've started to really get into the market of using it as a recruiting tool, um, as a differentiator between us and many of the other organizations that are you know, looking for top tech talent, top merch talent. Um, and at being able to really show um, those looking for a new job or looking to change careers or looking to, you know, move. And I think there's also probably um, a benefit that employees get to feel like they personally are helping lift up the company and there's some engagement benefit from that. Looking inside the employee engagement le levels, you know, the correlation between getting people on social media talking and engagement levels is very strong and there's a proven connection between high engagement and, you know, retention levels, um, you know, all sorts of performance metrics inside the organization. The employees that are engaged in our program feel more connected to the brand feel like they understand the strategy of the brand more more clearly right. and absolutely is, in, is improving the morale. There are so many people in organizations at all levels who want to be doing more of this and it's and, and don't necessarily have the tools or the access or they're you know on a plant floor or they can, you know there's a lot of barriers to it and so how we're thinking a lot with clients about how do we build it into their engagement plans and make it easy for people at all levels of the organization and all jobs to, to get active and encourage them to do it.